Has your nipple ever looked white after feeding or pumping? Or have you been diagnosed with thrush that hasn't responded to the traditional treatments? Most likely it's not thrush, it's a vasospasm. A vasospasm is where the blood vessels and nerves of that nipple have been constricted, pinching off their flow. And when you release it, all of the blood and nerves respond back, kind of like if you've ever had your arm fall asleep, where then you are realize, oh my goodness, my arm feels numb. You pick it up, you move it around, and you get that tingly pins and needles sensation through it. That's a very similar concept. It's a vasospasm. Um, it's often caused by a shallow latch, an undiagnosed tongue tie, or the wrong size pump flange. Usually when you're using a flange that's too big, where it pulls too much of the areola into the tunnel, constricts those blood vessels, pinches them off, and gives you that vasospasm. If that's you and you've been diagnosed with thrush, most likely it's not thrush. You want to figure out why you're having that vasospasm. It could be as simple as changing your flange size, or if you're suspecting your baby has a tongue tie or a shallow latch, working with an IBCLC to help you navigate that process. While you're trying to figure that out, some of the best strategies are to gently massage or rub that nipple, pinching it just a little bit to get that blood flow to respond back to that nipple. You also want to immediately cover it to prevent evaporation. Um, you want to do heat um, because evaporation is a cooling process. When liquid turns to gas, it uses heat energy from its surroundings to transition. When milk and saliva evaporate off of your nipple, the skin and surface tissue cool too rapidly, causing the vasospasm. So to slow that evaporation process, you'll want to put on a dry heat, a towel straight out of the dryer, a lavender pillow you've thrown in the microwave to heat up, your warmed hands, um, or something like that. Um, using wool nursing pads between breastfeeding sessions or thicker clothing um, covering in your bra can also help keep that nipple warm to prevent that vasospasm. You basically want to pre prevent anything wet or a fast cooling of that nipple. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of good quality research on nipple vasospasms, but what you really want to do is make sure you get a good deep latch every single time, assess your baby for a tongue tie, and make sure you have the right size of that flange. Other tips include avoiding nicotine and medications that could cause vasospasms like pseudoephedrine and beta blockers. Avoid or limit your caffeine consumption. And some research indicates that hormone-based birth control pills also increase your risk of a vasospasm. The main supplement that seems to help with vasospasms is vitamin B6. Dr. Jack Newman suggests 100 milligrams of vitamin B6 twice a day to help as part of those reducing vasospasms. Calcium also plays a role in blood vessel dilation, and magnesium helps in the absorption of calcium. So supplementing with a calcium magnesium supplement can also be really helpful when you're working on resolving those vasospasms. Um, there's also um, some conflicting opinions on the use of ibuprofen in, as a vasoconstrictor. Um, so sometimes you can help prevent a vasospasm with occasional use of ibuprofen. For chronic painful vasospasms, or when you think you have a vasospasm disorder called Raynaud's phenomenon, where your fingers and toes go blue or white, it's a similar vasoconstriction issue in your appendages, you can talk to your primary care physician about a prescription for nifedipine. Nifedipine has been frequently used for Raynaud's, and I've had a couple moms that I've worked with in my private practice where they truly had Raynaud's phenomenon in the nipple. Um, there was no tongue tie, they were using the right size flange, and baby had a deep latch, but their blood vessels were constricting during feeding and latching, and so they used nifedipine temporarily to help with their symptoms. Now you know.